My name's Bill Kearney. I, I grew up in Warren County. Matter of fact, this is my family church. My name is Dolly Burwell, and I was born in Warren and Vance County. I'm Wayne Mosley. I was uh, born and raised not too far from this uh, very site. When I came along in Warren County, it was still a farm community. I grew up in segregated schools. We're a rural community that was by some considered poor. It was not a pleasant experience, but I had the love and support of a big family, an extended family, and a wonderful community. During uh, 1978, Buck Ward owned a transformer company in Raleigh. As part of the insulation, there was an oil that com contained PCBs, or polychlorinated biphenyls. That carcinogen was very difficult to uh, dispose of, very expensive. PCBs had been dumped along the roadsides of the state of North Carolina by Ward's Transformer uh, illegally. Because the state of North Carolina did not have a toxic dump site, one had to be established. It was evident to me that the state was going to put the PCB dump in Warren County. They said, well, let's take the path of least resistance. Because it was basically politically impotent and because it was a poor county. Those made for conditions where the state thought that it wouldn't be in a problem putting a landfill. Something needed to be done. Here at Coley Springs Baptist Church, the, the church opened its doors up to us. This, this church is located approximately two and a half miles from the actual site. I remember there were meetings here, there were organization meetings, there were marches that started from the church, and the church played a significant role in being a hub. What does God require of us but to do justice, love mercy, and walk humbly with by God? So they saw that as, as part of what God required them to do to stand up against injustice. Just the audacity of someone who comes and just dumps in your community, and the Bible says, do unto others as heavy do unto you. The only thing we could do was to raise our voices and to stand up against what we knew was an injustice. We were really not trying to start a movement. It turned into a movement. I think I was inspired that day. For some reason, I, I was working in Raleigh and had only asked off for a day, thinking I was to come up, participate. Children was a part of it. My own eight-year-old daughter, who I thought was going to school, and she said, well, I'm, I'm gonna go with you to protest. And as a mother, you know, I knew that the trucks would be carrying toxic waste and wasn't sure that I would be safe uh, and, and certainly didn't want to put her in any danger, but I couldn't say to her, this is worth my putting my life on the line for, and, and this is something you can't stand up for, too. It was about justice. During that march, time was uh, frozen, and we were caught up in the emotion of what we were doing. I remember leaving. I remember the joy of camaraderie, and I remember but before we knew it, we were here. And it was the first time in my history that I saw whites, black, and Native Americans in this county really come together and stand up. We were met by approximately 50 highway patrol, full riot gear. There were helmets, face shields, batons in hand. And we said, oh my goodness, what have we gotten ourselves into now? She was saying to the reporter that um, she was not afraid of going to jail, but she was afraid of what this toxic waste was going to do to her community. I and 66 other people voluntarily laid down in the road to block the first trucks. People who had never marched before uh, they found other ways to participate, whether that was cooking, whether that was delivering food and water to the marchers. In the recreation yard, which our supporters had gathered along there after we were arrested to give us moral support. As the day went on, we began to get hungry. Nobody had fed us. So apparently some of the ladies had gone home and fried some chicken and made some biscuits. And what they did is they got some of the young boys that uh, 
were athletes to act as the uh, deliverers of this uh, food. We would say, uh, throw me a wing, or throw me a, a thigh, and they would throw it, and we would catch it in the yard. During that time, we registered people to vote, and people be became engaged politically, and they, as a result, they elected a representative government in Warren County. We were able to garner the resources to make the governor live up to his promise to detoxify and clean up that landfill. Being a Christian and realize that Jesus uh, not de only dealt with the spiritual, but he also dealt with the natural. And we, we have a responsibility to be the voice. So I believe now it's really important that we, who are inside the county, began to tell our story. We felt that we had to do those things in order to uh, ignite the spark that uh, lit the fire that uh, went across the nation and became an international movement. It was the convergence of civil rights and environmental rights. I think Warren County serves as a, as a really beacon. Poor people and a few people can have a huge impact and ordinary people can make an extraordinary difference.